Today we're going to our friend's house. He goes by the name Archon. Now this guy has become a friend of ours, but Archon is one of those guys that's, I'm gonna say, it's, he's like a true like collector of like the most obscure, like crazy stuff you'll ever see. I've never been to his house yet, none of us have, but we've seen pictures on social media, on Instagram, even his YouTube channel, some sneak peeks. I always see his stuff on Instagram and I'm always like, dude, now I'm so jealous. And by what we've seen, we really want to go check this place out, so we're doing it. We're making about an hour, hour and a half drive to Simi Valley, so let's do it. This stuff is crazy, crazy good stuff. Nice. nice. So we're here at Simi Valley and we're stopping at McDonald's to meet up with the rest of the guys. We're in we're in Simi Valley. We never come out here. I'm excited to go to Archon's house and it's a it's a little nippier out here. Everyone could come except for Complex, so we're kinda of a little bummed out that you couldn't make it, but it's okay. Welcome to the NES Pursuit. Hello. They got some of the guys are gonna do some trades and dude, we're all good. So Chan! Seek up this drive! Getting ready to go see this amazing. I'm talking about amazing, amazing gamer. Are you glad that Mikey's here? Oh yeah. I'm just gonna slide. That's the whitest brown thing I've ever, oh, oh my gosh. Wow, cringe compilation 2020. <laughs> <laughs> we worked out a trade. I gave him some gift cards, some cash, some stuff, and he, he got something for me. So the first thing we need to do is make a little trade me and Reefo. We've been waiting for this trade for a while. We're goofing around with the crew and it feels good to all be in the same place. The weather's nice, it's beautiful out. I got something for you. It's a, this is definitely not it. This is Mikey's. But I'm at McDonald's right now because Gabo and I wanted to do a trade before we got to Archon. I'm gonna wear uh, it, bro. Oh, oh you're, are you crazy? Gabo brought me an Xbox One Elite controller. I love the Xbox One controller, dare I say. Here you go. Wait, this wait. is it. You have to smell it. Oh, okay. Xbox One Elite Controller White. Uh, the X, in my opinion, the Xbox One genuinely does have the best controller setup by far. Xbox One controller is probably my favorite controller of all time as far as feel goes of yeah. any controller. Maybe Super Nintendo is second for me. Kind of bounce back between that and Super Nintendo, but I think I've pretty much locked it in with the Xbox One. But the Elite kind of just gives it that little extra edge, the cool interchangeable D-pad. Give me the controller, it's the white one. It's beautiful, it's literally mint condition. Okay. For me, in my humble opinion, this was the best controller until version two. Version two Xbox. The Elite. version two is amazing. Yeah, it's almost like he's never touched it, but I know he has because it smelled like uh, like sour cream, and Gabo eats a lot of sour cream. Smell. <laughs> Good. What but I'm you? happy to have it. I've actually played it even since then, and my God, the springs inside of the, the controllers, the joysticks feel amazing. <laughs> It is what it is. It's uh, probably, I'm gonna say, my favorite controller now. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I guess. Wow, 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 wow. Very happy to have it in the collection. It looks beautiful as well, so thanks, Gabo. But now, and we're off to Archon's house. It's time to go to the Archon. <laughs> that, didn't out, that didn't work out like we wanted it to, but it's okay, we tried. <laughs> house it's good to greet him it is so good to see him get good to give him a hug again kind of welcome into someone's home I didn't even know you had all those tattoos if I'm honest Nice. I don't know. Oh, yeah, look at the Ninja Turtle ones. Yeah, they go all the way up. Turtles. We, we walk into his living room, his actual his living room. We're not even going to the game room yet. We just take a step in. Right, right when we walk in, this is the first thing I see <laughs> on his wall. And right to the right is original art from Nintendo Power yeah, Magazine. So that's all original art from Nintendo Power Magazine. Um, he has this all beautifully displayed on his wall for everyone to see. This isn't hidden away, tucked away in some desk and some shelf where you don't get to see it. In March at the SoCal Retro Gaming Expo, you'll see a lot more of it. I have 80 more pieces like this at the framer right now. Wow. He has these framed on the wall and he actually has a ton more being frame as we speak. Um, Ooh, blades oh of gosh. steel, man. He said this is kind of like his new thing right now as collectors, and as you'll see in a little bit, people collect for different things and get into different things all the time when you're in the collecting retro nostalgia world. This yeah. is really cool, so, dude. But at the show, you'll see I have a couple covers, a couple posters, 
tons and tons of spot illustration. Um, I know. This is my newest thing. This is where he's kind of putting a lot of his time right now. So I'm excited to see what we see here, but it's also exciting to see what he's gonna have in the future. <laughs> this is awesome. Uh, I'm having a hard time talking to you right now yeah, because no, I'm like. It's uh, everything, actually everything, every dollar, free dollar I have right now is going towards this project. This is stuff you literally just, you don't see, you won't see it. So we're not even in his game, game room yet. And I'm already beyond impressed. Wow. <laughs> oh my god! Wow. Oh. There's one of each of those, yep. right? Well, you are a true nerd. <laughs> So one thing that Archon had in his house that was pretty cool, I'm like, at first I thought it was a little weird, but to like when I found out what it was. That's a, um, a piece of the original Nintendo call center. He had this big, like, I thought it was a rocket, for it's a piece of concrete. It, it, was, it was like signed by like a bunch of Nintendo people, but the cool thing about it was. So in, I think it was 2010, they bulldozed the original building on the Nintendo campus and they pulled out two pieces. They had the executive team sign it. And two of these pieces were auctioned off. He has one. And then, uh, and they auctioned them off internally to employees and I just happened across one of the employees that, that won one of them. And I believe the only other person that has the other one is Reggie which is pretty darn insane. We're starting to realize before even getting into Archon's actual game room that he has things that are completely, completely uncommon, rare, not even just like, oh, a few were made, but literally one of a kind. What is That's this? That's what I was talking about. Yeah, so those are the, the so if you look at the, the Nintendo Power cover above it. And one of those other things that is still, again, in his living room is these pair of shoes that are just sitting in a glass case in his living room. So we asked about it, kind of knew what it was when we saw it. We recognized it because above it, there was sitting a Nintendo Power. Um, those are the shoes that were shot for that cover. So these shoes that he has were the shoes that they used to model the cover of Nintendo Power Issue 3 to promote Track and Field 2. I was thinking it was the Magic Johnson shoe. No. <laughs> no, there's a, the... I think, I'd I think I'd rather have these, truth be told. I mean, it's yeah. so much cooler! I mean, the rocket shoes. So. I mean... And this is something that's really cool because it's not just cool in like the video game world. I know Mikey, even Gabble a little bit are not, I wouldn't say like extreme sneaker heads, but they definitely are into shoes. Uh, yeah, so Nintendo Power number three, the cover was Track and Field 2. So it's a cool world because it's also cool for like video game type of people, but it's also cool for people who might be sneaker heads as well. And they did these, they made these rocket shoes out of a pair of Converse and those are the actual Converse that they shot for that cover. <laughs> this is a lot cooler than a lot of game rooms that we've seen. We haven't even been in his game room, again, because we're seeing the most unique things ever. And those literally walked up to me, no pun intended, at, at, <laughs> at Portland. I was staffing that little pop-up museum I was talking about, and this guy came up and he's like, hey, I have these, are you interested? I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> So as we alluded to before, this trip is a really special trip for us to be here. And this goes beyond games, beyond game room, beyond YouTube, anything like that. A few years back, maybe two years ago, Gabo and I were going to the Portland Retro Gaming Expo and we got off the airplane and were greeted by a fan of the show, Archon, now become a friend. But uh, when we talked to him, he started kind of telling us his story about why he likes the show and how he enjoys it. And I noticed he was starting to get a little teary eyed and a little choked up. And then he went on to tell us the reason why the show was so important to him and why it's become such a big deal for us to be here. His wife has stage four cancer. And while she was getting chemo treatments, her, Heather, and Archon, they would watch us together during her chemo treatments. Yeah, so when Heather was uh, sick the first time, when she was, uh, her first battle with cancer, she had, um, she would take an intravenous chemo. And he told us that his wife really wanted to meet us one day, so we exchanged numbers, and we kind of wanted to get this into practice and get this going. Sadly, one of our biggest regrets and biggest uh, disappointments, kind of things that never fell through, is there was a few times where he tried to get us over and it didn't work out for us to be able to go over there, and there was a few times where we texted him and he wasn't available, he would be at different expos and thing like, things like that. And that would take hours, and so we would actually sit in the hospital and uh, her and I would watch um, your show 
Washi Tokimo. Like that was my 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 first big connection. That's why I, like I freaked out uh, when Riff and I met at the what is it in Portland? Portland, Portland. In Portland at the right airport. Off the plane, right off I the sort plane. of yeah, I kind of like freaked out on him a little bit. <laughs> but um, and sadly, his wife passed. And it wasn't too long ago that this happened and we ended up seeing him at a different expo again about a week later and he was telling us about it and we said, dude, we gotta get out there. We still wanna honor Heather and her wishes for us to kind of be there and see the game room. Uh, she was really supportive of Archon and what he was doing. Very big support of him. But yeah, that's, that's how we met, as essentially through cancer. It's just amazing to finally be here. It's like, I, I don't know, it's like, uh, you, you, you wish, you, like you could have. We could have done. We could have been there when she was around. Like this, that was like the one thing we really wanted to do. And we just, you don't. When you, we didn't get to. I mean, I I love being here, but. I honestly was so excited to meet her at the same time. Uh, for us, it's a really special thing and a really special moment, and it lets you know that your show goes beyond video games. All right, so we're still in his <laughs> living room. We haven't even gone anywhere near the game room yet, but I have to ask about this wall of giant posters or some of these fabric or they yeah, all so they're paper. All, yeah, those are all nylon banners. I look over to the right. Dude, it's literally these point of sale banners, posters, I don't know what they are, but they are amazing. And um, so where do I, they kind of come from across? I mean, I know there's a whole bunch of them, but. So the top two, uh, the Super Nintendo is here and then Nintendo has arrived. Those are both console launch banners. So those, wow. these are, so these are Amazing. all, these are all point of sale banners, right? So they'd be in stores. It's like a Nintendo one when like they were trying to promote Nintendo, Super Nintendo, Star Fox, Ken Griffey Jr. Dude, these things are amazing. And the fact that he framed them, they look so good. Uh, but uh, those top two are from the console launches and then each one for, Mario Mania one is the only one I don't know a ton about. It was like, you know, that was a marketing campaign for wow. for them. I've only seen a couple. I think I'm gonna come back to Archon's house. <laughs> Dude, just to see these things. They are so cool, I mean. But, uh, and then the Mortal Kombat one is the, the launch banner and then. These are so cool, they're so big and most people don't, won't display them properly because they don't have the room. But Archon, I love that he's just like, I will put these everywhere in my entire house to kind of display these proudly and do them justice. So that's awesome. And a lot of these had like little banners, like the Star Fox one has, a, I don't have the mini banner, but there's one that says competition here. Yeah. It goes over the, is here for. So the competition would come first, they'd finish the competition and then just tear off the mini banner and wow. then still have the, the display. Being a sign guy, I love this kind of stuff. It's so, it's so cool. This is the stuff that you don't get to like come and peek in at, you know? Yeah. The complete collectors don't have this kind of stuff. Hey, this is the cat's meow, for sure. I'm sweating already. That's amazing, look at that. Real I want to touch it, but I can't. That's so good. And then you, you guys tell me, oh, I don't understand you. Oh, we need to do uh, Rosetta Stone with Gabo, blah, blah, blah. Right before we decide to go into the actual game room, he shows me something else that he wasn't even planning on showing us. But this is extremely cool. <laughs> this is all production material from Howard and Nestor. So none of it's original, but it's all like original photocopies. Like I got it from original employees, but. It's production material from Howard and Nestor. Now these are a lot of the communications that would go back and forth at Nintendo when they would make different strips or comic strips. This is like when the layouts would be faxed back and forth to each other. Um, so it's all like um, communications between the artist and Nintendo. So like the editor and the artist would fax back and forth because that's what you did then. He has the copies, the faxes of really how it was done back in the day. There was no, oh, send it to me via this or via Dropbox or AirDrop or anything. It was like, hey, let's fax this. Send it back and forth. Do you want the script to look like this? Do you want the layout to look like um, this? It's like he, the artist would, you know, fax something like this for approval or actually, you know what? So this shows like how they were gonna lay out the bubbles and then he was asking for feedback. Um, you want the art to look like this. This is the kind of stuff, again, 
again, we're not even in his game room, and it's unbelievably, stupidly cool, unreal Nintendo Grails. So this is this is from the, the Prince of Persia uh, comic strip. So this is the original the original pitch that came from the artist. So he faxed it to Nintendo, and then the Nintendo employee then noted it. So the, all the red is notations from uh, the employee, and then here's the revised rough. So from here, it would then go into actual production. We've seen everything in the game genre world now, and now we've seen everything that's like beyond the game, the actual video game world. <laughs> Son of a oh gun, bro. Look how bro close Brady lets me get. Brady, you're the most chill dog, I love it. What a good dog, better than Gabba. <laughs> And now it's time to go into Archon's game room. All right, he's giving, he said just go on in. He said I'll be in in a minute. Ricky, I'm going in. I'm going in. And let me tell you. Oh. Bro. As you walk down this hallway and you look to the side and you can see in his game room, you can actually see my jaw drop. I can tell you oh just- Oh my gosh. Oh my, oh dude. Come here. Oh my god. Oh dude. The kind of stuff and the way Archon has his stuff displayed and laid out. Dude. Oh, 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 Mikey, look at this. Dude, walking in is like walking into Five Toys R Us at, at the same time with all the science. Oh, oh, oh my oh, oh, gosh. Oh my goodness. goodness. It's unbelievably beautiful. Holy cow with signage. Holy cow with complete game collections, which he at this point is almost like, oh yeah, complete game collections as well. But he's past that because he has all these crazy, rare, nostalgic items. Oh, look at that killer instinct jacket. <laughs> Oh my gosh, bro! Dude, I, com <laughs> this is a complete Sega Pico case. Oh my gosh! Oh, oh my god! god. You see this Power Glove one? <laughs> Holy, dude, look at that! It's, <laughs> dude, it's, it's glorious. It's so amazing. Oh my, oh my god. Look at this, Mikey, just look right here, bro. That are nostalgia infused because we recognize them, but there's also all these things that are nostalgia infused because they look like they're from the 80s and 90s, but we've never seen them because they're that one of a kind from rare collector's jackets to pieces to, to Nintendo awards to the rarest video games of all. Oh my gosh, dude. Wow. wow. That Sega sign. <laughs> I know, it's so nice. You feel like you're a kid again. Oh my god, dude. <gasps> Two different markers and the, diff I don't even know how to say it. He just has everything you could think of and beyond. This is one of my favorites right here, Mikey, I have to say, right off the bat. The oh Sega sign. Bro. This is it. I've been in so many game rooms. This is it. I haven't even looked at the stuff yet in detail and this is it. There is no better game room that I've been in. It, you just don't beat it. Wow. This is sign <laughs> heaven and rare games heaven, which is again, not my favorite part, but look at, he has all the cool awards and he can go more into them. And the jackets and the random Mario Mania hangies. And it was literally like super impressive, mind blowing. And I saw a lot of things that just brought like a lot of nostalgia to me. So thank you very much, Archon. Wow, <laughs> son of a gun. Yeah. Wow, dude! I love you. Wow, my belly. Get him, Gabo. Get him. <laughs> yeah, you're not 90s. Get out of here. You keep walking. Banish him. Banish him. <laughs> room is some of us have like the same beliefs as far as like faith and religion or some of us don't believe anything or whatever we all have different kind of beliefs I'll leave it at that I'll be honest I feel I don't know I feel funny 
like we're buddies of happiness. But it was weird because we all kind of felt like a sense of like something in there, and I don't know what you want to call it, depending on what you believe in the world or whatnot. Maybe, maybe it was Heather in the room. Maybe it was, maybe it was God saying, "Be at peace with the fact that you guys missed her, and but you're here now." I don't know what it was. I've been in, in a lot of game rooms. Awesome game rules, but to be honest, this is the first time that I feel like. But it was weird because, again, with us all having different like backgrounds and thoughts on spirits or religion or whatever. I, since I get in, I just feeling like emotional, emotional, like amazing, good energies, man. I don't know. We all felt like a cool sense of something in there, like a sense of like. I don't know, just like, it's okay, like things are good, of calm. Happiness, I, I'm about to cry, to be honest. I don't know why, it's, it's funny. So it was a weird thing, but also a cool thing to kind of all experience together. Not saying it was one thing or another, but something felt right. It was awesome. I don't know, I, I, I can explain it, to be honest. It's unreal, to be honest. looking at Tiger handouts, Castlevania, Sonic 3, Ninja Turtles, Ninja Gaiden, Battletoads, Mega Man, Power Rangers. I know Tiger handhelds don't get a lot of love, but you know, I'm gonna show them a little bit. Oh my gosh, the other jacket. All right, do the honors. Are you jealous of his jackets? Yeah, I'm pretty jealous, I'm not gonna lie. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. Back to Mexico. I'm going to Mexico, 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 Mexico. Tell me about this. This kind of sticks out because I'll be honest, I've never, like a lot of these signs, I've kind of like seen pictures of around the internet and things, but never seen a person. So many things are one of a kind, or maybe even two of a kind, because this one item that he has, this I've never seen at all. Yep, yeah, it's because there's two of them. Two of these made. Yeah. And he come to find out there was only two of these. Now they actually come from Mattel from what we understand, but it's interesting because uh, it's one that size that we found a third one that's like a like a like yay big. Okay. But for that size there's two of them. So they were made for CES 1990 wow. uh, for, the, for the Mattel booth. Um, and that's why you can see it's kind of falling apart. So this is from Mattel booth, not yeah. Nintendo. That's Correct. awesome. Yeah. But it's interesting because Archon's telling us that there's only two of these made, and we're like, oh, that's so cool. I can't believe that you have one of them. You know, he's like, they were actually on Craigslist randomly enough, sitting there for a long time. But, uh, but yeah, so this was one of two signs of that size. I'm like, that's cool. And he's like, oh, I have the other one too. It's just not in here. And I was like, really? I've never been able to say that in my life. <laughs> these have never been sold in the world, only to me. <laughs> I, can only, I can only say that about my children that I've purchased. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> two made. Beautiful, bold, giant, unique, two of a kind, and you have both. Really don't mind me 250 each. Wow! There, there's no uh, us just being settled with what's here. Every two seconds, he's telling a new story from behind somewhere of something you're like, wait, 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 what? This, that, 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 you got that from there, and this is that, and that's from there, and this is. Unbelievable! Unbelievable! Awesome. What's happening? Nothing. Archon's honestly cool as heck. He gives Gabble this, like, dude, I've never seen it. The limited edition of uh, Driver for Xbox. Um, nice. I really don't think you have it. <laughs> um, it's, uh, I'm pretty sure it's rare as heck. There's like special edition Driver box with like a 3D print coming out of the car and all that good stuff, but dude. They're super, super hard to find. I happen to find a sealed one, so that's, you're happy to have it. Oh my God, thank you so much. <laughs> Even the dogs have it. Yep. Wow. Pulls it out, he's like, here you, here you go, Gabo. Because I know you like Xbox. Dude, what a guy. <sighs> when I found that copy, it was the only one I'd ever seen. I'm pretty sure it's pretty rare, because I never seen it. Gabo was like speechless. He's like, oh, oh. Gab Gabo was feeling those spirits, bro, for sure. <laughs> he really was. Uh, uh, I don't know what to say right now, to be honest. It's unbelievable. Gabo was like, 
having a day. He was having a day. But I'm happy. <laughs> yeah. That's actually dude. So, it was funny because I wow. Portland, It's this room, bro. I don't know, dude, yeah. it's the energy. Yeah. I feel so... <laughs> I don't know, happiness? <laughs> There's almost no words for how today is going with the things he's showing us. But I was like, what else is like really cool besides everything in here? And he's like, you gotta check out these binders. So the last thing he shows us here today that we have time to kind of look at is so unbelievably cool to me. Uh, so yeah, uh, if you were at the Portland Retro Gaming Expo this last year, you probably saw these as part of the display, but... And he's got these binders all lined up and I'm like, what are in these binders? How cool can binders be? I've seen Nintendo binders before. He opens them. Uh, this and then these are uh, a set of gameplay counselor binders from the Nintendo Call Center. So when you would call in to the call center for help on a game, this is the content that the employees use to help you. Nintendo Gameplay, this is Terrell. How can I help you? They hold the keys to a magical world. Okay, so you probably you got zapped into the dark world then, right? Every time I'm in Cool Cool Mountain, you talk to the snowman's head. Offering solutions when you're stuck. You just stand on the right one of those little dark splotches uh -huh. and then use the mirror. Cool, I'm not a bunny anymore. You're not oh, a man, bunny I'm anymore. Here. A select group of 225. Nintendo's video gameplay counselors. You betcha so you got the bird to appear already? They're almost like even like the scripts, the drawings that Nintendo people would use at the Nintendo Call Center. So say back in the day, little little Ricky can't beat Zelda, can't beat Zelda 2. What do I do? You call Nintendo to the, the call center, you call the helpline. If you've seen The Wizard, which probably most of you have, um, the when when the characters are talking to the gameplay counselor in that movie, you can see a bunch of binders that he's going through. And yeah. He has the binders that the people would use to help walk you through the game. The walk, the, the cool pictures, the notes they would take. A lot of it's hand done because things are kind of happening, you know, in real time. New things are being discovered. <laughs> When you would get hired, they'd, send, they'd give you like a base set of, of the of maps, right? But then it would be up to you to kind of um, fill in the blanks, right? So like... He has all the books for tons of games for basically all the games back then. The, the, the Metroids, the Castlevanias, the Mega Mans, the Zeldas, the Marios. So like here's a... This is a walkthrough for A Link to the Past. Like just a Wow, step this step, is like, so cool! How you get through each screen, what, you know, you're telling them, hey, I can't get past level two, level one this. They flip through, hey, you wanna go to this, jump over the second Goomba and press down here. So kids would be like, I don't know what to do, I'm here, I'm stuck, and they'd be like, oh, well, what you wanna do, you wanna receive the pendant of courage, oh, and then right. talk to, oh, wow. It's unbelievable to me that these things even still exist, but it's more unbelievable that he has them. Uh, yeah, some of the, you know, a lot of this is, um, drawn in CAD, but then some of it's also hand-drawn. And he's just flipping through them, and we're sitting there flipping through these things, and you don't even realize until now, to be honest, that you're flipping through these things, and this is what they were flipping through. This is what actual Nintendo people in the call center were, were using to flip through to talk to little kids all around the world who couldn't beat certain Nintendo video games. What an unreal piece of nostalgia. Um, and how many binders do you have? Uh, five. Wow, um, dude. So they would cycle out, and some of it's just like actually just hand handwritten Notes, yeah. or whatever. Again, this isn't the kind of stuff you can go see in a game store. A big collection. Again, he has all these. We've seen these things. But these are the things that's like, there is so much history behind these that it makes them unbelievably unique, unbelievably special, and the kind of stuff that we'll probably never be able to see again unless we're here. Wow. This is very, that, very cool. Yeah. We can't even compare. We really don't. We suck compared to Archon. That's just the truth. Gosh dang it. He has a YouTube show. Just watch it. Go, go, go. He's off to look for games. Go find the rare games. Da -da 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 -da. Nice. There was a guy on Etsy that was the, he ended up being the like, he was the color proof guy for the t-shirt company. And so he had all this like old stock and some of it's like prototypes, like the, the patent information is on here with tape. <laughs> Say that I'm 
very thankful that we were like able to go in there and like look at his collection because there was some of the most rare stuff I've ever seen. Like there's like stuff that only he has and if there was only two made, he had both of them. So what do you guys think of this room? Oh. <laughs> so it was literally like super impressive, mind blowing, and I saw a lot of things that just this is one of the most unique places I've ever been to. So many things, so many things I've never seen in my life. I only so. have one thing to say. Well, thank you, Archon. It was amazing. Happiness. <laughs> Ricky, what do you think? I could stay here for days. Truth be told. Looks like I'm selling all my stuff and starting over. <laughs> Wait, how much you charge for rent here? Especially the way Archon like describes every little. Everything has like a story. I'm just like. And the fact that he actually lets us touch it, I'm like, oh, dude, there was things that I'm like, oh, what's this, Archon? He's like, let me open that for you. And I'm like, don't open it. I'm like, oh. <laughs> I mean, you want to come live here? <laughs> can, I, can I move here? <laughs> I used to have a really big beanbag chair. We kind of want to let it be where it is today to kind of honor not only Heather and the beautiful home and family they've built together and what she's kind of left behind, and also to know. You know, before I started really getting into it, I, my collection was a shoebox of Super Nintendo games. Uh, but then when Heather got sick, I decided I needed something to uh, distract me from that, yeah. and I sort of dove in. Yeah. Um, something that's really cool to know too is Heather has supported Archon uh, through this. It's unreal, dude. Thanks, man. I'm, I'm glad you found a way to uh, make yourself happy, you know, during during all that. But yeah. I know Heather is actually the one who got Archon Stadium events. And she was, but we'll a, be she was always so supportive too. Like she bought me my copy of Stadium events. If that's not support, I don't know what support is. So we definitely want to leave this episode here. We want to dedicate this episode to Heather, uh, to her memory. We're, we're going to, uh, on this episode, we're going to dedicate it to Heather. Oh, too, for sure. On the episode. Awesome. So we'll put that in there. For sure. This episode's for her. So she's awesome. I wish we got to meet her. She so. was great. Thank her for watching us, for allowing a dumb show like us to provide her entertainment uh, or laughter or whatever she might have felt while watching us. Um, Thank you to her for allowing us to do that for her and her family. So we'll be back to look at more because I'm sure, sure people are going to be like, can you please show us more of that in detail? Yeah. This is just like a skimming through. Yeah. But it's crazy because like this is not, um, I know Archon was saying a couple times like this is really cool. This is an honor you guys are here. But no, it's absolutely an honor for us that you're allowing us to be here not only in the video game world and check out your video games, but an honor for us to be able to be here and kind of close the loop of what we wanted to do and kind of kind of be with Heather as close as we could. So thank you. That's it. I know the video might have been a little different today, but that's the way we want to do it today because uh, this goes beyond video games. He's like, Archon is like AMPM. Too much good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look, 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 look. <laughs> nah, those brown jokes doesn't work on me. I'm not saying a twin would fit there, but a twin would fit there. <laughs> Sega Genesis, when I was there, broke, they would never register this. Archon, dude. I saw you looking at his butt, too, bro. Do you think your husband has an addiction? He does. Are you okay with it? There's no stopping him. No, I can't believe that cuteness came from this. Seriously. <laughs> oh, yeah. Say bye, man. Whatever. <laughs> I'm a skateboarder, okay? Like, you kick it? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Enrique, what the? Yo, this is. It is what it is. It's the most think, unique. Mikey? Nice. <laughs> I got nothing to say. Extreme G. Right. That's like why I brought on. Mikey and Gabo are on board of Ricky. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy how much me and you can get away with on this show being as dumb as we are. With I'm angry and jealous and upset, but Hakuna Matata. What'd you say about my mom? Nothing. What's your favorite video game of all time? Tetris. Really? Nice. That's a good choice. I can't play that song. I'll get copyright. This and that. The last video got copyright stricken. Did you like that game room I showed you pictures of? Yeah. Nice. <laughs> Ricky, my voice is being lost again. How do I get it back? Andy! Hey. Silentio, puppy! <laughs> Even better. You know who Stefan Urkel is? No. Dude, it's Steven Urkel when he turns into that <laughs> handsome guy. Oh, You're he, gonna burn in hell if, he you, if you wear this. He doesn't like the lacquers. He's the fakers. He's like he's like the Michael Jackson pops. Don't worry, I screwed up mine badly the first time. 
Rottweiler, that's his last name. What the? Look at this guy. Ugh. I messed up, I'm sorry. Go ahead, I'm out of it. You were supposed to click out a long time ago.